Movement is medicine. Yoga is therapy. Breath is belief. When we move our body, we have an opportunity to practice an act of self-love, of self-compassion, of self-care. It's something that arises from within when we move our bodies in a way that feels nourishing and supportive of the moment that we find ourselves in. So in those moments where we're wanting to move the energy, we're going to move in more active forms of movement and that is going to cultivate the fueling of that inner life force. In those moments where we're feeling more depleted or tired, we're going to focus on those practices that soothe, that are like a soul balm. And that is going to fuel the life force energy in a different type of way. Both meeting the need of the hour, meeting us exactly where we are at and providing us with our own inner sacred medicine. When I consider the concept of movement, immediately, of course, like many of us, my mind travels towards movement of the physical body, how we move our body through space, how we experience this life in this human form is through this temple body, through the physical body. It is how we experience the five senses. It is how we experience our relationships with oneself and other people. And so my mind immediately goes to how we move the body and how we move the body to fuel our inner life force energy. It really is the secret source or the magic ingredient to thriving in this human experience is to have a relationship with and a depth of knowledge and understanding of our inner life force energy. And so the movement of the body, of course, facilitates this. In those moments where we are wanting to move energy, we have an excess built up of energy or we are feeling tight or tension and those moments where you really just want to move the energy out of the body to find that sense of balance and grounding then we move the body in a particular way to do that. And it's innate within us as women to be able to discern and decide what that might look like for us. We really don't require anyone to tell us what type of movement we require or how to move our bodies. It is innate. What we need some support with sometimes is identifying the energy that is moving within us and what we require from that energy. Do we need to move that energy around the body? Do we need that life force energy within the confines, the container of the body? Or do we need to move some of that energy out? Do we have excess energy? And then similarly, when we're feeling depleted, then we may need to stoke that internal fire. We may need to stoke that internal life force energy so that we feel more vibrant and alive. We also may want to really ground that life force energy. And so our movement practice may be more subtle. It really just depends on how the movement of the energy is moving and circulating. And that's what brings me to this next, next aspect of movement. It is this aspect of movement of energy. So we have movement through the physical form, how we move our body through space walking, yoga, running, weightlifting, swimming, skipping, playing, dancing, whatever it might look like. And then we have the movement of energy within the body. The actual movement of we in yoga, we call it the prana, the life force energy is the prana or in Chinese medicine, the chi. How we move and circulate this around and within the body how we use our awareness of this energy to determine how we move throughout our days, knowing those moments when we have the energy to surge and extend ourselves and play our edge, push our own internal boundaries of what's possible. 
and then also equally knowing when it's time to rest time to slow down time to turn back within it really is this arising from within which is what makes it this sacred potent medicine like a soul balm and it's also what makes it this radical act of self-love and self-compassion and self-care because we are in deep relationship with our physical body through our direct relationship with how our life force energy our prana our chi moves and circulates and how how we move through our days and the choices that we make impact that. Noticing the types of movement that feel really good to us and the types of movement that feel less so. Noticing the people that we're around that make us feel alive and vibrant and noticing those relationships that we have where we feel less so. Noticing the types of food that we eat that again makes us feel vibrant and alive and healthy and strong. And then noticing the types of food that we may choose that makes us feel flat or heavy. Maybe makes us feel even to the level of unworthiness. Makes us feel less than who we truly are, the magnificent you know, feminine form that we are as women. The next aspect of movement then is the movement for me of the breath. The breath that carries this life force energy on it. How we move the breath, how the breath circles and swirls and has this beautiful depth of intelligence like a wave that moves in and out of the body with every breath in and every breath out and then this spaciousness that rests in between the breaths so there is the movement of the body the movement of the energy and then the movement of the breath and how the breath is directly impacted and a direct reflection of what is happening both within in our internal inner realm as well as a direct reflection of what is happening in our external environment. Then there is the movement of the thoughts, the movement at the level of the mind, how the, move, how the, the thoughts circulate and some come back around and others hang around for a while, they move slower than others and how we may have an instantaneous thought and it's there one moment and it's gone the next. Movement is our constant. In this human experience, movement is constant. It is our constant knowing. The only certain thing in this human experience is change and change must be facilitated by movement. And so if that is the case, if this is truth that the only thing certain is change, that movement is a constant, then would it not be the wisest, most innate decision that we could make as women to tap into and be in relationship with movement in all of its forms. Would it not be wise and all knowing of us as women to deeply connect with our own seasons and cycles that are a constant state of change? Our menstrual cycle, for example, is in a constant state of change as we move throughout the different phases. The largest state of change through the menstrual cycle being the bleed, which is facilitated then by a surging of energy in a downward moving way. A pana energy, this downward movement of energy, this life force that is required to facilitate a shedding of the uterine lining. When we think about motherhood, it is a constant state of change. We are caring for children who are in their own constant state of change. And so finding this way to balance the movement of the energies is a constant. It is a constant 
It is constantly in our awareness. It is innate within us as women to be able to ride these waves of change when we are deeply in relationship with the movement of energy and when we are really truly harnessing our own inner life force. And so my invitation as we close out this part one of three episode, movement is medicine. The medicine is your own inner connection to your life force that everything you require, everything that you desire is already accessible within you. All you need to do is have the tools of self-contemplation to connect in with those parts of self. And so as you move throughout your days, notice, just notice, you don't need to add anything to your to-do list other than to simply notice how your body moves through space, how your body feels as you move throughout your days, how your breath feels. Does it feel easy? Does it feel heavy, short, sharp? Are you breathing quickly, slowly, steadily? Does it feel grounded? How are the thoughts moving and circulating in the mind? How's your energy levels? How do they fluctuate? And how do you adapt to that fluctuation? And do you notice that fluctuation? These are all snippets of self-inquiry, self-contemplation, just to play with. And I'm sure, certain in fact, that with time, as you play with these pieces, you will deepen your connection with self. When you notice, the first aspect is to notice, to bring awareness to something. And once we have the awareness, then we take the action. And it's from the action then that we cultivate the change. 